President Trump accusing social media sites of censoring conservative speech. Our guest says the accusations of bias are unfounded. Joining us now, Michael Beckerman, Internet Association President and CEO. All right, Michael, go ahead, make your case. Thanks for having me. Um, first off, as a conservative and someone who spent decades in Republican politics and campaigns, it's something I'm particularly attuned to. And when you look at the Internet and social media, there is not bias against conservatives. And in fact, the opposite is true. Conservatives have had a free and open voice on all these platforms and have been able to reach their audiences uh, directly. And the president in particular has been one of the best people at using these platforms to reach his audience and have his voice heard. Okay, well, we do have some specific examples of people who say that they were either blocked or they couldn't get their message on. Those examples are, scroll up please, I want to see this, Ronna Romney McDaniel, Matt Schlapp, so they say they were silenced, they are conservatives. We had a report in the New York Times yesterday from a Facebook engineer who said that firing, it's a firing offense if you say in that company, all lives matter. That's a firing offense. And that if there's any pro-Trump posters on the wall, they're torn down by the people at Facebook. Uh, are, are all these people lying? I mean, is there absolutely no bias there? That they're just not telling the truth? I'm, just, I'm saying it's just not accurate. It's, it's evident from looking at your own um, social media feeds and then the way individuals have been able to use these platforms and build up audiences. Frankly, um, when people are accusing social media platforms of bias, it's being done on the platforms. And as a result of some of these claims, it often helps to build your audience and that's often why people are doing it. Um, but also it's important to look. It's not in the business interest at all of these companies to have an approach that favors half the country or has an approach that favors um, one political ideology over the, over, uh, over the other. They're open to all viewpoints. And um, frankly, it has been very clear over the last you know, few months and few years as conservatives in particular have used these platforms to get their message out and talk directly to their people. I don't think that we want any bias one way or the other. We want free speech. We want to be allowed to express conservative opinions. Prager University, for example, they couldn't get on before they made a big stink about it. They couldn't get on and they're conservatives. Look, free speech is core to our democracy and nowhere, yeah, exactly. it, nowhere, nowhere do you see more free speech, more transparency and an ability to talk directly to people as you do on the Internet and on social media. What about trending stories? You know, that, that comes to you on social media. Trending, this is what's trending. I don't see stories from Fox News very often. I don't see stories from Stuart Varney or Fox Business. I just don't see it. I, I see your stories. I think it depends on it depends on what your preferences are, who you like. Um, you know, if you're if you're someone that has a social media feed filled with conservatives, you'll you'll see that. And frankly, it's something where, unlike traditional news sources, where um, you're stuck with what's on the channel or what's printed in the paper, on the internet and on social media, you can find and search and have in your feed um, a variety of sources. And particularly on the conservative side, it has been an area where those viewpoints have flourished. Now, next week some of the top executives at social media companies will be testifying in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a very big deal. Are you a little worried? No, I think it's terrific. Um, Jack Dorsey, in particular, um, from Twitter, is testifying at the Energy and Commerce Committee, and I, I applaud him for doing that, and I applaud the committee for having him. It's important that somebody like him, who's the founder and CEO of a company, can go up and educate policymakers on how the platforms work because education is necessary. Clearly there is um, a misunderstanding of how the platforms work and having somebody like Jack Dorsey going up on Capitol Hill and explaining it and educating people will make us all more informed and uh, add to the transparency that already exists. Okay, well we will follow the battle and we'll no doubt take some of that hearing when it occurs next week. Uh, Michael, look, thanks for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you.